Thanks for joining today's enablement session. And today's topic is how to troubleshoot a high RAM usage. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm working in Click Support as a senior technical support engineer. So I, I provide the support for uh, different Click products, includes Click Science, Click View, and, uh, and printing. So now we will start providing troubleshooting for SAS. So today's agenda, we will talk about RAM configuration setting in ClickSense, and uh, also what are the troubleshooting steps for um, high RAM usage issue. And that will give you a typical example from our, I mean, happened from our client. And uh, the last is a Q&A session. So if you have any question, you can ask me during Q&A. So firstly, we before we do any troubleshooting, we need to understand uh, what are the RAM configuration setting in the click sense. So the first thing is a system requirement. So these are the basic system requirement. So basic basic requirement for CPU calls and the memory usage. So now all the click sense server hardware need this requirement, but uh, we always uh, keep in mind um, with the workload increasing, then the hardware uh, capacity also will be uh, need to always be reviewed over the time. So the RAM setting in ClickSense, we can find from engine in QMC. There are three, three uh, configuration. So one is app cache time. This app cache time is to uh, let engine know how long time you want to you want engine to keep the app data in the cache. So basically, by default, it's 15 minutes. That means if after 15 minutes, if no one use uh, accesses the same app, then this app data will be uh, deallocate from the cache. And the minimum memory usage by default is 70% and the maximum is 90%. So this is uh, by default, this is the default setting. Uh, I do say many customers, they change this setting based on the uh, business requirement. Um, but keep in mind for even max maximum memory usage. Uh, if 90% is normal, but if consistently 90%, then we do need to find out what caused this uh, high usage uh, all the time. So we do need to know what exactly happened, whether it's healthy or it's unhealthy. For click sense, the memory, what type of data in the memory, we can we can uh, break it into two uh, categories. So one is necessary memory, another is cache. So for necessary memory, we keep the data like uh, metadata of the dashboard, the and uh, aggregated data set from the app, and also each user's session data. But in the cache, we calculate and keep the aggregated data. So all the calculation results will be, uh, will be uh, kept in the cache. And uh, normally, this, we try to keep this cache data as long as we can. That means the engine can reduce the time to, to keep doing the same calculation. And that is how we, we keep the high performance all the time. So many customers ask how, many, how much RAM exactly the app, um, app consume. So the app normally, um, the app 
is a compressed file. But once we load the data, app data, into the RAM, it, the RAM will consume like a four to 10 times of the QVF file size. For each user session, then we will, we will um, calculate around like 10% of, um, of calculation data will be increased. So I can give you the example later on, yeah? So the process engine to load the data into the web is when the user access the hub and open the app, then the data side of the app will be loaded into the web, and this is a necessary data. And also the app metadata will be loaded into the web as well. Uh, same as the uh, user session data. Then the user will open the dashboard, make some selection, that the engine will based on the selection and the front end expression doing the calculation. Engine next will be render the chart. So the engine will access all the um, app metadata and also uh, the data model, then do the calculation then uh, keep the total value into the into the hash and also um, pop up the dashboard finally. So that is that was how uh, engine loaded the data into the cache whenever the user access app. So this is the example like we have one user access the app A, and uh, we can see this uh, dark green is app data set data, and uh, this uh, green is uh, session data, and uh, this light green is is a calculation data. Now we have user two access the same app A. You can see the same data app data set will remain the same. So it will, we will not double the app size into in the cache. And the session data slightly increase and the calculation data also increase. This is based on um, whether they are, these two users, they are making the same selection. If they make two, uh, if they make a quite a different uh, selection, then the calculation will be largely increased. Then this is the user three, you can still say the same. So the user three made a lot of different selection, then the calculation data increase. So keep in mind if you have more users access the same app, but if they make different selection, their activities quite different, then this calculation data will be largely increase. Yeah, so this is one thing I think um, you can always keep in mind whenever you investigate this type of issue. And it could be majority of the high RAM usage are from this calculation data, if it only happens with a specific app. So this is one way we can analyze quite quickly. Uh, we have, we provide, uh, there are many different uh, tools. We can monitor the RAM usage. So typically we use Windows Resource Monitor. We, yes, we, we use this to uh, understand what process consume the RAM and also how much usage. And also we want to see the CPU because CPU can tell us whether engine is doing calculation is really working hard to do the task reload. So we also have a telemetry dashboard. So telemetry dashboard uh, is another app which can give you lots of uh, different uh, visualization about your app and all app objects and how much RAM uh, they consume. So we have operation monitoring app 
this one I often use. So basically, this is a must tool I use to analyze this type of issue. Yeah, it, it gives a lot of different uh, visualization from different angles we can, we can analyze uh, the concurrent user, concurrent apps, concurrent tasks, what exactly uh, happening on, we, on the specific day, specific time period. So we can really do them to find the story. Um, and also we have a lot of all these other resources. So I just provide some main resource and this is a PDF file to uh, give you very detailed information how exactly engine work with the memory. Um, yeah, so once you get my PDF, you can get all this, this link. Yeah, um, and this is also available from community. So now how exactly we troubleshoot the high CPU usage? Typically, when the customer complain about this, the system are normally three type of system. So firstly, they may complain there are consistently high RAM usage, no matter when. It could be last of all few hours, it could be last of all 24 hours. So it's a very strange situation. Then another system could be um, the app. Whenever they open some app, the user open the app or the specific sheet, then that takes quite a long time but looks simple, but actually not simple. So we need to find out how many tasks are reload, are doing reloading at that time. How many users are accessing the hub at that time. So looks simple, again, it's, it, there's a big story behind. A uh, third one is a task. Yeah, always um, we run usage high, we also need to find out whether it's related to the task. So the task could take quite a longer time to complete uh, than why. Yeah, so there are so many possible root causes. It could be related to the system architecture design. It's uh, not, um, yeah, so the design basically they need to review. Um, and also, the QuickSense server may be not a dedicated server. And uh, we need to find out how many, what type of other software consume the results from the same server. It could be caused by there are too many concurrent tasks and uh, maybe some tasks reload for the live data. Maybe every five or 10 minutes they have the same task reloaded, or maybe caused by very poorly designed app. Maybe caused by the app data set is quite large and the customer not aware of it. So over the time, this app data set will just be keep increasing. Um, or could be there are so many users, concurrent users access the same app. And also, there's a possibility the hardware need to be upgraded. I do see many customers, they are not aware the hardware need to upgrade because the workload keeps increasing, but quite obvious from all the data I collect, the ClickSense server, the CPU and the RAM cannot accommodate all this workload. So in order to find the real root cause, we need to do a lot of data collection. Yeah, so firstly, we need to uh, look at from the high level over architecture. We need to know the ClickSense version, uh, the system diagram. So basically, uh, how many ClickSense server they have and uh, where the ClickSense server located, in cloud, in virtual machine, or maybe just a physical box um, at a client office. 
Are there any uh, network load balancer device in front of ClickSense? Um, and also, what services enabled on each node? So I will turn on Windows services to see. Oh, sorry, this is a Click QMC service. Sorry. So basically, um, this is very important part. On each ClickSense node, what exact service are enabled? Scheduler service, proxy service, engine service. Printing service. So, based on these enabled services, we know what is the purpose, what the job this node is designed to do. And the Windows environment, how many call and how many total CP uh, RAM, RAM memory. The next we we need to look at the QMC click sense server setting. So I always do web conferences confirm this because um yes, because there are lots of information and uh, I found that the client um could not provide all this um information yeah at once. So it's always good to do web conference to find out Look at their QMC node. Are they having single node or multi node? And uh, what are node details? Is it pro for production? If for production, that means there's no development work. That means there's no hub reload happening. Yeah. And uh, if this node is for dev, that means uh, there are lots of hub reload and uh, find out how many developers. Uh, do they also have the end user working on the same environment? But normally, uh, normally for that environment, there are quite a less uh, end user. That means less hub access. And uh, both means for both, yeah. So that means all type of user can be online uh, to access the, the same node. Then, uh, then the same, how many um, services, what type of services enabled on each node and how many. So whether they have one dedicated scheduler node or, or, uh, or two. So that means the workload get balanced. So how many consumer nodes? whether the node is only for authentication or for hub operation as well. Yeah, so this is very important as well. Then logging setting. Um, we have logging setting on engine and repository. I do see some customer, they even are not aware they have this debugging mode turned on, then the performance is quite low. So it's it's quite necessary to check the logging setting as well. Then the RAM setting as mentioned earlier. Uh, what virtual proxy is used? So this virtual proxy will define, we define the authentication method. And also very important, we can get to know the user group. So for instance, uh, you have developer, you, you have end user, you have external user, you have internal user. So it could be the virtual proxy only for developer or maybe only for external user. Then we will know when the problem happens, what group of the user are accessing the ClickSense server. So this is a very good indication information for us and the load balancing. So the load balancing, whether they have excellent load balancer to uh, to to uh, redirect the workload to different click sensor server. Um, have they set up a click sensor load balancer? I found that they, even though the customer has multi nodes, but they actually didn't set up the load balancer. So all the workload are still um, still uh, dedicated on one particular node. So
so it's good to know. Then we also need to find out what exactly consume the high RAM usage. So, so whether the click sense server is a dedicated server. Normally, how I find out is I will turn on the Windows Windows service like this Windows service. Then I will um, sort by the running status. So I I look at the running status to say what uh, software are running at that at that time. I do see quite often the customer even have a SQL Server database or and also have other um, click products like click view and printing installed and running at the same time. So this is not something we want to we want to hide. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, open the task manager to con con confirm the, the um, exactly uh, click sense process consume how much run usage. Yeah, this is also important to know. Um, yeah, and uh, antivirus is uh, any antivirus software keeps uh, keep doing scanning. Uh, whether this highly high usage issue only happen on specific node or all nodes. Now we need to look at the real issue which the customer is complaining. So we need to ask the question, is there any change on ClickSense server? That means, have they done any Windows update? Uh, sorry, uh, apply any Windows update? Have they done the win uh, ClickSense upgrading or apply any ClickSense patch? Is the issue only happen after this change? So we always need to uh, keep note what exactly happened on the server. Um, and also the pattern of the issue. So this I found is quite difficult for the customer to find, but we always try to encourage to collect the information as much as we can. And uh, at the end, we still need to use operation monitoring tool to find the mode. So we definitely have very power, powerful tool to find out all, but this is the first hand information we expect the customer to to know as well. Yeah, and also provide us. So whether this issue only happen on specific node happen on a specific time. Is it on at the peak time, non-peak time, or particular time? I can see some customers, they have allocated so many concurrent tasks to be reloaded at very peak time, like from morning 9 to 12, they allocate 20 even more tasks to keep reloading. And that is a peak hours for the business user access a hub. So immediately we know this is a bad design. And uh, the first step is they need to review the task to see if it is really necessary to have to reload in the morning. Yeah. Um, and also particular time and any other time. So based on this time, we will go to the operation monitoring app to find more story and also get information from the log. Um, why does this issue happen when open the specific app? Then, then we need to find out the data size, size of the app. How big is that app? How many concurrent users open the app, access the app? Whether this is happen when, when reload the specific task. Also, we need to find out at the same time how many other tasks uh, are accessing, how many how many users online and accessing the apps. So all these are facts to impact this uh, this performance and. Uh, 
So again, important to know the user group. As I mentioned, from the virtual proxy, we can quite easily find out the user group. Uh, virtual proxy, yep, this, so this is a virtual proxy. Uh, data source type and the location, this is related to the task reload. Sometimes the uh, network connection also takes time to, to reload, and that will keep the task reload time longer then definitely the engine will be busy and the RAM will not get released. So all these things we need to keep in mind. Um, yeah, all this, this information total, we need to understand how many total users, total concurrent users at a peak time, at the specific time when the issue happened. How many uh, in total, how many tasks, total concurrent tasks, when the problem happens, and the total apps, total concurrent apps when the issue happens. The reason we want to, when I open the QMC, I will look at the total number of this, is, is because I want to understand their workload. So when, they, when this workload keep increasing, even though now the issue just started happening, it could be happen quite often later on, and uh, and the later and and um, if we do not fix this, then it will getting worse. Yeah. So so again, could be related to the hard, hard, hardware need to upgrade, or maybe the system uh, architecture need to get review. Um, get the exact time frame. This is very important. When the customer reports the issue, they always not mention the time frame because without the time frame, we cannot look at the log. So we don't know what exactly happened um, at that time. So time frame is is the indication for us when we look at the log and also operation monitoring app. Yeah, so now I have collected all these data. And uh, those data, when I, what I have mentioned, is whenever I get this type of issue, I, I will collect. Yeah, so um, if I miss something, then the investigation can go to the wrong path. So that's why I put a lot of slides on the data collection. Yeah, that is the first step to make sure we are on the right track. Now I have listed few scenario when this high run usage happening. Um, the customer, the first scenario, the customer complaining high run usage happen when they access a specific app, but it may not about the app. There are a couple of root calls behind. So we need to firstly find out if this is happening anytime or specific time. Yeah, so we need to know the time pattern. And um, we need to know, find out, um, are there any other Windows software running? Any other task reload? And how many tasks reload? Are there, is there any quite a large task? So we need to find out the task reload uh, duration and the maxi rate duration and the average duration. So all this can find out from operation monitoring app. And uh, how many user access the same app? Again, this we can find from operation monitoring app and the app data side. Uh, user, user type. So whether it's internal user, external user, or public user, or all, because this user type can tell us the amount of the user, total user. And then we need to base on the time um, to find out the total concurrent user. So there are a couple of root calls. It could be 
single node is overload when there are uh, app access and also task reload. So it could be this app is very quite a large app, a uh, lot of uh, end use access, but at the same time, there are many tasks also uh, scheduled to reload. Then the suggestion would be to uh, re to spread the task reload at non-peak hours. Uh, recently, I just got one case with exact the same issue. They have 20 plus tasks reload um, yeah, between 9 and 12. It's very busy task schedule in the peak hours. So um, yeah, first thing they have to review the task schedule. And then if a single node, if there are lots of um, app um, access, uh, sorry, uh, customer, sorry, uh, end user access the same app, and it's quite a large app, and at the same time, there are also many other apps get accessed. Then also a lot of task reload. Then they need, we can suggest them to, to either more scheduler node or maybe possible more uh, consumer node. So we, the, we also can suggest them to set up the load balancer quick sense load balancer among all these consumer nodes. Um, also find out if there are any development work on the same node, then maybe they can have a specific node for developer to work. Yeah, so this is how from QMC you can find the load task and a concurrent task number. So this is a multi-node environment. Um, this is a quite a basic multi-node. We have two consumer nodes, we have two scheduler nodes, and uh, um, we have dedicated database and a dedicated share folder. Um, so this is a quick sense load balancer. Yeah, I often I say they even have um, multiple consumer nodes, but they didn't set up the load balancing. So that means still all the user actually they're accessing on one node only. So another reason could be app design. It's quite poor app data model design and also app design. Uh, we always suggest to minimize the front end expression because this will be calculated um, when user access the app, when the engine to uh, run the chart, the dashboard. Um, and this is this definitely will slow down. So what, as much as they can uh, do this. Um, to finish some calculation during um, during data load. So that means in the data load script, if they can define all this expression calculation, then that can help on the app performance. Um, and also to keep reasonable data set for the target user. I do see the user, the customer, they have very large app, and that app uh, has the data for all departments in the company. So, like finance, HR, and um, and uh, um, other departments. Over the years, so that means this app contains all type of data in the company, and it keep growing. Um, the customer not aware. So I ask the question, if your um, different department user normally will access other departments' uh, data, do they, are they allowed to have this access? The answer definitely no. So I suggest them to separate the large app into the small apps. Uh, one for finance, one for HR. So, for example, 
And uh, yes, so this gives them very uh, good instruction and uh, the customer quite happy about it. Uh, we, yes, so we, we need to also educate the customer how to design the app. Mm, we do have very good information and tool how to optimize the app. So I did mention telemetry dashboard. You can find a lot of information from community. So here I also want to bring up, um, bring up one, bring up this um, from our Click Help. This document ha can help you a lot. So this gave a lot of information for, about how to optimize your data model performance and uh, sheet performance. So like in the data model, how you should design your synthetic key, whether it should be removed or you can still necessary to keep. And uh, what type of data model, Snowflake or star scheme, or star, uh, star model? Um, and also about the QVD, how you should segment the QVD files. And uh, in the sheet, we also have listed many functions. So what a function can help you improve the performance and what not. Uh, you may need to minimize to use those functions. Um, to, so you see it differently. I strongly recommend to review this. Um, it's very good information. Okay, scenario two is about the task reload. The issue happens when the task reload. So the root cause can, can be, there are quite limited CPU calls. In this case, we need to, so that means they have very less CPU calls, but they have large amount of uh, concurrent tasks. So there is one way is to increase the number of CPU calls. And uh, more CPU calls, we can process more tasks. And uh, another is we can reduce the concurrent task. So they can spread out the task reload at a different time and also give some time gaps uh, between the concurrent task reload uh, because uh, the engine needs to take a little bit of time to release uh, the task data from the memory. Um, yeah, so these are quite, this normally very helpful. Um, and uh, the second reason, uh, it's quite, there are quite limited scheduler nodes. For instance, only one scheduler node, uh, one single node doing hub operation and also task reload. Then when there are more and more users um, increase and also more, more tasks, the more apps, then workload increase, then definitely we have to review the, the, the QuickSense servers, um, the design, and see if we need to increase the scheduler nodes. So this definitely helps. Um, also, trying to minimize the live data load. Of course, there is a business requirement, but just need to say if really necessary, have to be five minutes, 10 minutes, and uh, the number of the tasks. So basically balance it out with the hardware resource and also spray um, yeah, with the hardware resource. Um, the third scenario is um, is about the increasing workload. I have mentioned a few times um, that um, the customer they are not aware their hardware does not has reached the limit to accommodate all the increase increasing workload includes app access and uh, task reload. So the best way is to get a help from uh, from partner or from uh, from partner to review the system architecture 
um, to see if their current architecture can meet the requirement, and uh, if not, then increase the consumer node, the scheduled node, or maybe separate the database, uh, have different dedicated database server. Um, also, uh, they, is it time to upgrade their hardware resource? The last scenario is, so there are still uh, many other scenario. I just mentioned quite, uh, quite a typical scenario. So this scenario four is also the example I wanted to mention. Um, I did say some customer, they say they complaining, saying ClickSense not releasing the memory. Why? And uh, you can see this example is, um, I, I'm, I'm so sorry this picture is not so clear, but I, I wish you still can see. So the, the RAM consistently like 96, 98 percentage. So they wanted to know why this memory is not released. And uh, from the operation monitoring app, we can see concurrent apps. So this is happening like 24 hours. And uh, concurrent apps, there is zero or one only. And concurrent users, zero or one or two. So quite a less user access. And uh, mm, yeah, concurrent apps, also one, two. Yeah, so the question is, uh, why? Yeah, again, I, oh, I need to collect all the data. So the click sense server, and uh, there are one central node, four RIM nodes. So for these four RIM nodes, all the scheduler services are disabled. That means there's no task reload happening on all these four RIM nodes and uh, one scheduler node. So the scheduler node, this one central node actually is a master scheduler. It doesn't do task reload as well. So the, all the task reload actually are on scheduler node only. Um, each server, they have 256 uh, gigabytes RAM and the minimum Memory setting is 94%, maximum is 98%. So to me, 98% is, uh, is what they said. Our default is 90%. Yeah. So, um, so far, I don't think 90% uh, is wrong. So, but why? Still, we need to find out why. All servers are in AWS, in the cloud. So, um, yeah, that's a good setup. Mm, I, I'm not a sh I'm I'm not a comment on this system architecture. Yeah, but so far all this is okay. Then two RAM nodes are always occupy 98% RAM usage. So these two RAM nodes are among these four RAM nodes. So that means um, only hub access. Um, consuming this 98%. So this is my first impression. Um, okay, now I keep collecting data. I have, they have um, four consumer nodes uh, for hub operation because the scheduled service is disabled. And the two consumer nodes are for authorized users. That means these um, authorized yeah, authorized users. And the other two are for public users. And the problem only happens on these two nodes, which are for public users. So this we found through operation monitoring app. Um, then from, then I need to look at um, the QMC, the RAM setting. So app cache time is by the, they set up like two hours. That means they inform engine 
to keep the day app data into the cache for two hours without uh, if there's no any user access the same app, then the app data will be uh, released from the memory. Yes. So that means we need to make sure within these two hours, there's no user access. The minimum memory usage is 94 and the maximum is 98. So from this uh, operation monitoring app, I wanted to bring up my operation monitoring app, give you a little bit uh, so we can go through, because this is a tool I use. It must use the tool, otherwise I wouldn't be able to find all this information from the logs. So I would I will say CPU usage. So in their case, CPU is quite low. That means um, that means there's not many calculation, uh, not many task reloads. Yeah, and then I can confirm through all the other data. Then I will find out the RAM usage and the total reload uh, reload. Uh, average reload duration. So if longer, that means a large reload. The maximum reload, yeah, and the maximum concurrent users, maximum concurrent apps. And um, then this gave me a good overview last 24 hours activity. So I keep go through each app. Then I may select some um, date, which the customer, uh, sorry, which the customer has an issue. So, for instance, I put 2021 uh, November, November, and uh, I select a few days. So, this few days is based on the dates. Uh, sorry, I don't have data. So it's based on the date um, the customer has a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so I just bring up some data as an example. So here, this is exactly uh, the slide in my, in my uh, PPT. So this is a RAM usage. You can see uh, the time period, the different time period, the time use, uh, the RAM usage, concurrent apps, concurrent load, and concurrent users. And you can see uh, the trend of the RAM and the CPU usage. Um, again, you can see the total reload and the, the reload, so the task. So in their case, nothing to do with the task. So we can skip this. And this also is about the task. Then session, yeah. So this is what we need to focus on in this example. The session is uh, we need to find out how many user access, how many sessions. Yeah, one user can uh, can um, create several a uh, couple of sessions. How many concurrent apps, and uh, um, and uh, what are those apps? Quite large app or small app? And if I suspect this app, so you can see in my environment, then I also have user quite actively access the, this, uh, the apps. Then I may want to find out which app has, um, has more session. And uh, then when I, when I select these top uh, two apps, I can obviously say there are many um, users access 24 hours because this is our internal server. And then data, so based on my investigation, I found that they have top 50 apps, but only two main apps have the highest session. And also I can find that there are continuous user session within 24 hours. So that means they have an anonymous user access the same two apps 
for 24 hours. Then in this case, the app will not, the app data will not get released because the app data cache was set for two hours. And in, from business um, aspect, I can say this is quite good, um, good thing happening because a lot of public user access their app. Yeah, so, and also that explains why we want to keep 20, 98 RAM usage in the, in the cache because this is how we can engine to improve the performance. So keep high performance to share all this ready data among all the end users. So this is a slide I, ca I, I captured. So these are two apps. And uh, so when I look at these two apps, I can see 24 hours, they are user access and public users. Um, I did check um, for seven days, seven days data. And I see only one Sunday, the data, um, there's only there are few uh, six hours, seven, six, seven hours, the, the cache, uh, sorry, the, there's no session. Then we also find out, confirmed within this, the app data get released from the memory. So from whatever we say, this is quite he um, healthy environment and it's normal. But if they do not want to uh, keep this calculated data, then there is an option. They can clear out this cache so from the from the engine. Yeah, we so this is one article how they can clear out the cache if they want. Yeah. But otherwise this is very healthy. So that means high RAM usage, we need to find out what causes this. And whether this is normal is all, all is a problem. Yeah. So I think all this, yeah, this is all what I wanted to deliver today. If you'd like more information, take advantage of the expertise of peers, product experts, community MVPs, and technical support engineers by asking a question in a Click product forum. Hiding in plain sight is the search tool. This engine allows you to search Click Knowledge Base articles or Click Community Forums, help.click.com, Click Gallery, multiple Click YouTube channels, and more, all from one place. There's also the support space. We recommend you subscribe to the Support Updates blog. Thanks for watching.